Why don't we enjoy an excerpt from 2016-2017 era on some HF digital modes that had been forgotten. Now check this out. Since I made those videos many years ago, how many thousands of people have joined into ham radio since then that have probably not scrolled back seven years and watched these videos, but they're still pertinent today. And I was using some of these digital modes in 2005 and six before they had rig blasters and all that stuff. You had to like get these digi interfaces and solder up and whatever, then, you know, hook up your radio to, to on a Vox circuit and key circuit and get this into work. If, if you were crafty, unless you had a radio, I mean, those radios back then didn't have USB interfaces and stuff, but check this out. If you're operating FT8 and you think that's boring or it's just not for you, there's so much more out there for HF modes. So many different HF modes like Olivia, Contestia, Thor, Domino X, Hellschreiber, MFS K144, Throb, all kinds of modes that you probably have never heard of. So I would like to have more people to talk to on those digital modes. And I'm not talking D-Star or anything like that. No, this is keyboard to keyboard. Picture FT8 with some human interaction. No zombie land just with a bunch of tones going back and forth while you do a crossword puzzle. FT8 to me, I'm glad it's in ham radio. It has its purpose. And for me to be fair, I would have to agree that I like the option that people can use it. Now, what do I do with FT8? Simple. I 3D print antennas and feds, and I'll test them at one watt and five watts on FT8 just to see which beacons picked up my signal and how far my signal's going. That's all I really use it for. PSKreporter.info is the site. I use it for antenna tests, you know. Throw it out there, call CQ a few times, reorient my antenna, call CQ again, drop it down to a half a watt, see who hears me. Then I can tell the effectiveness of any antenna I'm using. I don't really necessarily like getting on the computer and just watching the thing rack up contacts and very impersonal. Let's get personal again on ham radio. Let's let's make HF digital modes great again, right? So we're gonna I, I took these videos and I edited them and clipped them and made it pertinent. Now, remember, when I made these videos, I was using a Yaesu FT450. Some of these, I said in the video, I was using 15 watts. I had a high gain vertical in the backyard or maybe a wire dipole and uh, nothing fancy. And you can see that I actually made contacts. Um, again, these, band, these modes have been around on the bands long before I was a ham radio operator, probably back in the 90s. Um, you know, and if you're not familiar with those, let's take a look and I'll start uploading these few videos I have edited here and learn and try. Let's get on the air and have some keyboard to keyboard communications, some personality between two ham radio operators. And listen to this. Yes, FT8 will decode, what, 24 dB below the noise floor. Well, some of these will decode 10, 12 dB below the noise floor. Some of them are designed to handle static crashes on 80 and 160 meters. So there are reasons these were made. Some of them are called the curiosity mode, the magic mode. I mean, there's a lot of reasons these were developed by people and they have been forgotten. I mean, Hellschreiber, we can, that's a whole video in itself. Watch that one when it comes out because that was back in the 30s or 40s that they were using ticker tapes and, and man, you know, now it's pretty cool because Hellschreiber, you have, the computer doesn't decode. It prints it on the screen as an artificial ticker tape and your eyes and brain have to decode it. The more static, the harder it is to read. So. Check these out. I hope you appreciate the time it took to find these, edit them, shrink them down, make them pertinent, get out some information that I didn't have in there anymore. It took longer to do that and rewatch my videos than it did to make the videos in the beginning. So I hope you like this. And hey, let's get on HF digital mode and, and at least try it and leave your comments below and tell me that you, you just, this, if this is new, you've never heard of these, you've tried it, you were impressed, it sucks, I suck. FT8 sucks, FT8's great, my video sucks, whatever you want to do, comments are great because I can see how I interact with you instead of just watching these things go on the screen and not even caring, much like FT8. And today we're talking about another digital mode in our quest to teach you on using other digital modes instead of what everybody has went to is FT8, there are better options out there. Today we're talking about Olivia. Ugh. 
That sounds a little bit different, doesn't it? Let's get out of FT8 and get into something better. So if you're new to the digital modes, we're not talking D-Star, we're not talking DMR, we're not talking Fusion or anything of the sort. We're talking about various modes for keyboard to keyboard communication via HF airwaves from computer to computer. And there are many different modes. And recently, if you haven't seen my videos, I've done a couple of videos on FT8, which is one of the various modes. Um, FT8, though, is nothing like this. But it took off by storm and has taken over HF airwaves. So just checking out another HF digital form of communication from keyboard to keyboard communication like I am here with KD0WTO uh, on a waterfall that you can't even really see the signal yet it decodes in the poorest conditions. So let's take a look at Olivia. So I made the FT8 videos. People jumped on FT8. I tried FT8. I moved on from FT8. FT8 has turned into a zombie apocalypse on HF. And that's not just me saying it. Zombies. You're sitting there. You're not doing anything with the computer or with the radio. The computer's doing it for you, making the contact, just exchanging a call sign and a grid square. In fact, one person said FT8 is the mode when he becomes a paraplegic, he can operate it with a stick in his mouth. Now, <laughs> That's pretty much true. I mean, there's nothing for you to do. And, you know, again, it has its purpose. But for those looking for something fun, that's not it. I'm using Digital Master 780. And Olivia is one of the modes that's compatible with the software. In fact, the software I've used from day one, it's got a lot of digital modes here. All right. There are options available such as FL Digi, Mix W, some other ones. So you don't have to use Digital Master, but I've used this always. I like it. I'm familiar with it. It comes with Ham Radio Deluxe, but I don't even have HRD running. Um, I'm just using this by itself. Sound card interface into the uh, radio with Digital Vox. So the MFJ1204 USB sound card interface plugged into the radio. Radio set for Digital Vox, and I don't have to use any rig control or cat control. And here's the best part, guys. Listen up. If you're already using PSK, RTTY, FT8, or JT65, you already have all the stuff you need to try this. I'm not telling you to go out and buy stuff to get on Olivia. It's there. You got the stuff. Get on it and try it. Use it. So just another digital form of communication that offers efficiency that is like FT8 with the robust... Uh, chat QSO mode like PSK. Now, if you're looking at this, there's many options for Olivia. Which one do you want? Well, I'm going to explain to you here. The difference is, okay, PSK 31 means 31 hertz wide. Okay, little sliver. What happens when you go to PSK 63? It's a wider sliver that operates faster. And then you go to PSK 125. Well, that's wider than that and even faster. Olivia is the same way. 16500 is a really common area or mode that people operate. 16 tones, 500 hertz wide. Now, if you're calling CQ, you're probably calling CQ on 16500. If the band will allow it and it's in good conditions, you can step up to something like 32,000. That will double your bandwidth, double your tones, and essentially double your speed with a little compromise on error correction. So Olivia does use error correction to dig deep and get that signal, which is 10 dB below the noise level. So your noise can be three times your signal, and it'll still decode it with an algorithm of error correction. I never see anybody using 64-2000, but it's possible. I mean, look how wide that swath is. And if the conditions were right, you probably could use that, and it would be a lot faster. Um, but generally, you're seeing them on 16500, and if that's barely making it, you can step down to 8250. 8250 is the lowest mode, and if that doesn't work, it's not going to work. But 8250 is very common also. With that being said, you don't even have to see it or hear it on the waterfall 
You don't have to see it on the waterfall, hear it on your speakers in order to decode it. With this program or other programs, the Reed Solomon Signal Detection, the RSID, with that being active, you will see here, it'll pop up the RSID and tell me, hey, there's an Olivia 16500 at 1200 hertz. And, you know, I may not have even seen that or heard it, but if I clicked it, it would be there and it would decode. Now, what normally what people do is they look on, like go down here to PSK. Normally people go on here and they, like this, oh, there's a signal. They click on it and there it is. They make the contact. Here's another one. Okay. But what happens if it's so weak or it's not there? Maybe there is people there. Maybe it's there and you got people on FT8 right next to you and it's, you know, destroying it with QRM. Well, that's why they have a proposed frequency section or frequencies for Olivia so that you can be on 20 meters at 14.046 or 14.074.65, 750 hertz on the waterfall. And you can be there and potentially hear someone calling CQ without even seeing them. And you can call CQ there if they don't see you. It'll pick up on their program, you know. So you can find Olivia all the way to 2 meters. You know, last night I was on uh, 40 meters and 80 meters making Olivia contacts. There was one on each, I think. So very not really not uh, widely used right now. Hopefully this video sparks some interest. But I, I never use 80 meters until I got back into digital. Now 80 meters is... That's a hidden gem, just like 30 meters, man. 30 meters is great for digital modes. There's hardly anybody, uh, with the exception of FT8, taking the band over by storm. Um, no phone there. You know, uh, very quiet at night. Propagation's great. So you can find Olivia on other bands. I bet 17's been just slamming lately. Slamming. With phone and CW, S9 plus 30 at my QTH at, uh, in uh, Sebastian, Florida here. So, you know, try it on 17. Try it on 10. Yes, 10's open, guys. Don't look at the don't look at the charts. Every day I'm making contacts on 10 with my AV680 high gain vertical, 5 feet off the ground. So, what I'm going to do is, without the rant, because people hate that, I'm going to get on here and I'm going to find an Olivia contact and make a contact and see just how far that contact was. And I'm using, right now, 15 watts is what I have set up. One thing that disturbs me big time is how people said they're using 500 watts on FT8. That mode wasn't designed for 500 watts. There's not enough room for you to run 500 watts. And if you're using 500 watts, you're shooting fish in a barrel. I, there's several comments on QRZ video that said, I don't care what the band conditions. If I want to use 500 watts to make the contact, that's what I'm going to use. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, don't use 500 watts on Olivia. Don't use more than 30. Olivia is a QRP mode, a weak signal mode that's designed 5 watts, 10 watts, 15 watts, no more than 30. Because over 30, it's going to distort and it's going to do you no good. So go ahead and try to run 500 watts on Olivia because it's going to just mark up your signal, uh, distort it. And it's not going to look well. And, you know, give it some con give it some challenge, you know. Get off the FT8 with 500 watts. That's disturbing. It's just not even fun. Uh, let's go ahead and make it, see if I can make a contact find someone here on the band. So I'm calling CQ. And you can see the speed that it's typing out. This is 8250. I'm at 750 hertz on 20 meters. And, uh... Somebody came back to me a minute ago, and they were gone, but we'll see uh, see what happens. There he is again. See? There's the RSID, and you can hear it. Now, you see, it hasn't even popped up yet. It's still decoding it. Now, let's trans. There it goes, right there. Now, let's see if we can get a. There it comes. KJ4 YZI. See, now he's done transmitting and it's still decoding it right now. This is November 5. With, uh, Mike Whiskey Romeo. Alright. 
All right, we'll send back to him. So uh, we'll see about how far he is. Again, I'm, uh, let's see, 15 watts right now. That RSID is great, though. You know, when that pops up, it shows you where somebody's at. Let's see if I can hear anything. Yep, oh, there it is. And I got this a little bit narrow to try to cut back on the FT8 that's just above me. Uh, I got a little bit of filtering on. It took about 30 seconds for it to start printing after it, you know, been decoding for about 30 seconds. But it's a solid copy. Waterfall really isn't isn't even that lit up, you know. It could be stronger. Um, and that's about how fast it's printing out. Well, this is uh, showing me he's 1,487 kilometers. And somebody else started here with another either Contestia or a wider Olivia. And it's right halfway into this signal. And... It was still decoding most of this with them right here uh, being half in my signal and half over here. So, um, fourteen hundred kilometers. So he's using FL Digi. Let's see if we can go up to sixteen five hundred. So here we're on 16500 now. Some of it's missing here, but I'm still getting a contact, a copy on him. Barely see a signal, and yet the letters kept popping up. So a little faster on the 500, right? And uh, a little less sensitive. So it's there. Couple errors, but I can get what he's saying. Um, so that's uh, 16,500. Now I'm guessing if I went up from that, it probably wouldn't decode. It is a magical mode. Yes, it is. It's related as a magical mode for digital on HF. Just the way it decodes below that noise. Look here, got some Olivia 8250 here. Good solid copy there. 6 dB. Signal and noise. Um, he's a thousand kilometers from me in Salem City, Virginia. Or Salem, Virginia. Got some down here. This might be Contestia here. This is Olivia here. There was some MFSK on here earlier. Uh, but I'm hoping after this video to see more people on Olivia. Check out Olivia. Try it. Remember, leave comments in the YouTube video. Let me know about your experience with Olivia, your experience with the digital modes. Comment. Feel free. Let me know if you learned and if you tried and if you made a contact on Olivia. And I hope to see you out there soon. I like to play on uh, 80 and 40, Olivia. 20 is not the best of my antenna. Still working on that issue. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully you're out there one day. You Send me a message on Facebook. We'll hook up on Olivia if possible. And uh, 7 3. Ham Radio Concepts is brought to you by HamRadioPrep.com. It's never been easier to learn about Ham Radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit HamRadioPrep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name HamRadioPrep.com.